So good morning everybody and once again welcome back in today's class. Day number four and we were discussing about service now. Capabilities. Service now introduction and service now architecture. OK, and today we are going to be complete this particular topic of architecture and. Capabilities. So yesterday when we started, we were discussing about this particular. Slide. So as I said yesterday that these are nothing but these are the workflows and these are the different different products which service now selling it. Like if you if you check on the LinkedIn, if you check on the Nokri, if you check on any job website, you will find that. Company says we are looking for ITSM, GRC, HRSD, CSM experts. Those are the different products. Those are the different modules which has been built up and sold by. Service now. So we done. Up to this part three now in the operation. Operation means something which is required for a business for the day to day work. And what they say they included the concept called the integrated risk management. The previous name of this particular module was GRC governance risk and compliance. That how I will make sure the policies which I build. In my company to do the work should be followed properly. Let me give you example. Let's say I am working in a company and I am not allowed to enter into the hub room where a lot of CPUs has been set up. If by mistake I swipe my I card on that hub room, I got an email immediately. That why you swipe your card on that hub room. This is a policy and on the policy they have a mechanism to track it. Because for a company. Loss is fine loss. They can still bear it, but if it is a reputation loss. It is tough to rebuild again and it take a lot of time to rebuild that particular reputation. So every company says no, no, no I cannot risk, uh, take a risk. So we have uh, some policies. We have uh, some some governance and we have some compliance to work on that part. Another example. Let's say I go to market to buy some electronic item. And in India it is saying that a item must be marked by ISI mark. What this mean? This mean that this particular product follow the standards given by ISI organization. Or you see that. A lot of places you see. Our company is ISO 20001 certified. What this mean? My product, my food products are FASI approved. What this mean? This mean that those organization build some standards which I have to follow if I want to be sell out the products in the market. OK, so this is what the integrated risk management they introduce. Then we work with the vendors as well. Every company has a lot of vendors to manage those vendors. We have a vendor risk management. In case something goes wrong. How to tackle the business that is called the BCM business continuity management. In a, in a simple words, if I say to understand there is a term called the disaster recovery. If there is a power outage in your office from where the employee will work. Employee will work from the other building of the office. If that building also has a power outage from where employee will work. Employee will work from the another city. Of the same country. If the same other city also have a problem outage problem, then from where the employee will work. They will work from the 
other country. This is what? This is called the business continuity management. This is a very small example, but if you think from the wider, wider organization perspective, then you can understand that how this work actually. Okay, so to track, to maintain, to have a life cycle of particular sub stuff, we're using the BCM in this part. And this is a separate module. Okay, then procurement, daily sales purchase which happen in the industry. How to track that part? ECG, something new they have introduced. This is this is uh, ECG is related to this carbon footprints. And there's I I forget the company it's Deloitte or some company who build this product for service now with support of service now as well. How many wastage you are doing? How many electricity you are using? By that you can calculate that how many ECGs of carbon footprints you are be using that part. So these are the separate separate modules which you can use. And don't think and don't just see this slide only that okay, actually these are the 1520. No, these are not 1520. There are lists. Let, let me let me show you here. Service no products. Mm -hmm. Not this one I want. This one, products by category. Now you can you can imagine. So let me go A to Z. So these many products service not selling. So what what I say simplify, let's say these are the five columns, one, two, three, four columns. OK, in if in a single column, I can say these are. 30 to 40 entries, so in a total four columns, we have more than 100 products and these all are the separate separate products. These are the separate not products. Sorry, these are separate separate modules which service now provided providing to us. Incident management, change management, DevOps, Agile, everything is there. Everything is there. Go and check. This is what? So this is this is a, just a summary I can say. But actual things are here. This. If you want to know more about service now, you can go and check it here. See. OK. Then at last for the developers. Developer means who will build this particular or who will maintain this or who will build a new application on the top of this particular service now. For that service now provided the. Separate section. And that is called for the build and automation. What this mean build and automation? It includes App Engine Studio, a latest product of service now. If you are not a developer, but still you want to build any application, you can use the App Engine Studio. Automation Engine. I want to automate my processes. I want to automate my workflows. I want to automate my work. We can do here. And something this ERP and Vault. They have introduced newly. Which I have no idea. Now this is a one part. Other part is that I told fine. That's OK. That's fine. What else service now is doing? Service now is building the product for the industry specific. You can see here. Financial services. Separate products for them. Telecom services, telecom and tech providers like Vodafone, British Telecom. With the support of them, they build a complete system. They build a complete module. They build a complete product. Which can helpful for the. Specific telecom and the tech providers. Healthcare and the life sciences. 
public sector services, manufacturing industries, energy and utility, and retail. What what is what this mean that service now say okay I build everything for the IT I build customer I build technology I build employee but what about the specific industries now for that vision vision and the mission they start connecting with the different different banks different different telecom companies get their requirement understand the requirement and build the requirements in the service now these are separate applications which you have to be download or you have to be take from the app store and these are the licensed one as well now we are going to be discuss about the licensing okay so this is a small picture a small understanding that what service now capability this training will give you a basics only that how service now is built up and what are the major components in the service now after doing this if you want you can make your career or you can pick up any of this module even this as well you start picking up and you start learning that part every product every module in itself is a big chapter if you say atul i want to be learn hrsd don't worry go ahead but it is in itself it is a very 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 big c Okay, clear everybody till this point. Any doubt? Any question? Yeah, no doubt. Okay, good. Now let's come to the next part. Here, this is very much important. But before I start, let me let me put a very clear disclaimer. we are not going to be discuss anything about the pricing that how much service now charge for a license and also if you want to know about this you cannot find any information on the google you will find only one statement that if you want to know about the pricing of the license you need to be connect with the service now sales team because when the sales deals happen there is a nda has been signed that we are charging x amount for this license y amount for this license and all the things will be there okay so the purpose of bringing this slides to tell you two or three important points number 1 let's say i am a user and i am using amazon website to use amazon website do i need to pay anything i'm not talking about the premium amount or the or the prime amount no the basics to order something to get something to request something do i need to be pay anything extra no i have to be just create my account and i can browse amazon website i can order i can get delivered i can get refund everything this particular concept or you and me are considered here as a end users we are the users who are using this particular amazon website flipkart anything you can pick up we are just using those particular interfaces or using this those particular applications to check or to request something to check some knowledge base to raise some incident and check the status of our incidents only this is what called the end user so whenever now going forward if i say guys he is a end user it means in service now we don't assign any license to that user take this as a theory as of now we will do we will do this practical as well we will create the users and all things then you will come to know the practical part but for the time being just understand that in the service now end user means which 
don't require any kind of a license. OK, that is the first and important point in this part. Now, who need the license? That is important one. OK, who need the license? You call your let's say Arnav is facing some internet issue. OK. Arnav is facing the internet issue. He raised a complaint to the service provider. OK. There is an executive who talked to who talk to this uh, what I can say. Arnav and say OK, sir, give me your details. Capture the details and sir, this is your incident number or the complaint number. Fine. Arnav get the complaint number. That's very good. After that. Two hours. Arnav get a call. Sir, could you please check your internet connection again? We have done some changes from our side. He said OK. Arnav check the status and I've checked the internet uh, settings and now things are working fine. And that executive told to Arnav, sir, I'm putting your ticket in the closed state. Arnav said yes, because work has been done, so you can do it now. Now think from that perspective, the person who raised a complaint on Arnav behalf and the person who are closing the incident on Arnav behalf, they need the license in the background because in our service now world, we called them as a full filler. Full filler is someone who fulfill your request, who do the work on your incident, who do the work on the changes in the background, not an end user. And they required a license. And that license is called the ITIL license. So now if in our discussion I am referring that OK guys, he's a fulfiller. So the basic role, the basic license that person need is the ITIL. It is a chargeable one. It when I say chargeable, it means it has some cost associated. What is the cost? I have no idea. But yes, it is a chargeable one. Now the third point. Is called the. Like let's say in in a family, Arnab, his sister and parents are living. His father and mother is an admin of that house because Arnab and sister is very very in in a not in a young age they are a kid only so they both are admin it means they can do anything in the house they can ask for the renovation they can remove any stuff they can bring any stuff anything they want they can do in the same manner in service now world in the in the same manner in the service now world we have a concept called a system admin. OK. Or we call it as sys admin. System admin or sys admin. We don't provide this role to everybody. But to work in the service now to configure. To customize to build the logic. This rule is required. Again, this is a chargeable one. I am telling this is a chargeable one. OK. So don't don't feel that it's not a chargeable one, but yes, it is a chargeable one. But giving the admin role means you are giving a key of your house 
to other person as well. So be careful that who is going to be work as the admin, but in service now if you want to work on anything when I say work means from the development perspective, customization, configuration, workflow designing, workflow implementation, email notification, SLA. To do that particular stuff, you need a admin license. So on the motor motor part, we have an end user. We have an ITL user, which we call as a fulfiller, and we have a system admin in this particular bucket. Clear everybody till this point. Any doubt, any question? Yeah, Atul, I just have one small question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have it beautifully. Otherwise, just one small thing related to one statement you wrote for non-licensed user. You wrote that they can create it, view it, which is fine, but you also wrote they, they can modify it. So. Can yes. you give me an example where they can modify? Modify it? only own ticket, not anybody else. Ah, okay, okay. They can add comment on that. Add on comment. Okay, that bit. Right, right. I was wondering about that. Okay, fine. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. So sure. now let's move to the next one. Let's let's understand service now. Because when I started my career in 2009, I was supporting um uh, this thing. Telecom company. OK. We go, someone give us the KT, you have to do this server monitoring, you have to do this particular monitoring and other things. But nobody tell that how this architecture has been built, how this platform has been built. OK, in the same manner, we need to be understand that what is service now architecture. Because someone says I want to become an architect in service now. Fine. If you want to become architect in a service now, you need to be understand service now from the roots level. Not on the high level. Incident change problem, anybody can tell you. You can learn very easily. But if you don't know that how this platform has been built up, that's a little bit worried point. Even though nobody will going to be asked any question from you on the architecture level in your in interviews. But we need to be understand. So service now is a multi instance architecture. Multi instance. What does this mean? Multi instance. What is meaning of instance? It's like a user interface. OK. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, from what I instance is like your own platform. It's it's like the platform, like the interface that has all the. Mm -hmm. of, um, I'm not saying I'm not saying interface. I'm saying instance. Not interface. What do you mean word? What do you mean by the word instance? What do you think? I know what is the meaning or what is the definitely meaning of the instance? And let me tell you, there's a one person who put this as a comment in my one of YouTube channel, a YouTube video as well. Atul, you're using the word instance at a lot of places. What do you mean by the word instance? Not hey. a can I try again? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so it's like it's like the system that has that that it's configured for that has its own um how would I put it? Its own application. Mm -hmm. Different applications on the service now. Okay. Yeah, something like it has its own set of applications and databases and it's clubbed together for that particular instance only. Why why you are why are clubbing everything? Inst club together service. I'm not saying that I I don't want the answer in the service now terms. 
in a layman language i need to be tell to my my mm -hmm. son that what is the meaning of the instance what you say yeah let me think on those lines uh, it's it's like something which has been built specifically for you customized for you i mean how to put it else uh, so what do you think sahil An instance is specific utilization of any oops. It takes the form document type of a name. No, no, yeah, no. You are you are creating unnecessary confusion in your mind. Okay, I tell you one thing. I'm I'm talking to my wife. Okay. And I said, do you know that we went for a party? She said, yes. One instance happened there. She said, what happened? Means from the complete party, I am just picking up a small portion for a discussion. In a in a simple, in a layman language is something like this. Let me show you this. Now these four are what? Atul, these are tabs, right? Right, everybody agree? These are the tabs? Yes, they are tabs. Now, these are the four tabs. But this tab is one instance of the service now product and solution. This is what the meaning of the instance here. If you open multiple Gmails here, maybe in a one Gmail, same login, same IDs, with the same ID. Maybe in a one Gmail, you are writing something. Maybe in the second Gmail, you are you are checking your spam mail. In the third Gmail, you are checking your inbox. In the fourth Gmail, you are checking your thrash. But ultimately, these are the instances of a one that is called a Gmail. So this is what we call as an instance. A, a very minute thing or or, or I can say. Let, let, let's try to be understand from the normal English word English. Um, instance meaning see example or the single occurrence of something. This is what single occurrence. I have multiple tabs, but this is a instance. Of single occurrence is Pureka for this particular link this is one instance maybe i open this only this is one instance i'm checking of the service now product this is the second instance this is the third instance this is the fourth instance so this is what now let link it with our work service now is a platform which work on the multi instance architecture. This mean. If I am using service now, Arnav using service now, Eliza using service now, Sahil using service now, we have our separate home like this. There's a no relationship between my service now and the Sahil service now. There's no relationship between my service now and the earn up service now. Which provide me separate application nodes. Means it's not like a sharing. We are doing the sharing on the very bottom level. Some hardware is a shared, but we are considered as a standalone always. I give an example. Let's say in a hotel, total 10 rooms are there. Every room has its own electric fittings and on plumbing fittings. When I say on means complete pipelines are also different. 
there's a no relationship between one pipeline with the other rooms. So that if anything goes wrong in this particular instance, there's a no impact on this instance. There's no impact on this instance. This is what the concept called the multi instance. This is this is a very plus point of service now here. We are shared definitely some hardware has been shared, but application nodes and database are completely given dedicated given to customers. You cannot access my data. Until as I give you the rights, I cannot access Sahil data. I cannot access the uh, Elisa data. Until as they create my account in their instance and give me the rights to do that part. Put the questions. What are your questions? Put me. Think. No questions. Chalo, good. I'm happy. I'm happy. No questions. Because silence is golden, definitely, but not in your case. In my case, it's a golden always. OK, so this is a. Service now architecture now today read about that multi instance architecture. I I tell you one one thing. When I started my journey in service now. I have a question. Why everybody is using service now? Right in in a market, if if you let's take example from India. Now, if you notice Arnav or Sahil, almost people are buying the big cars. Kia, Carreta. These are these are the very common brands nowadays in the market. Why? Do you think that they are cheap? No, they're not cheap. If they're not cheap, then what are the parameters you find out? Let me give you a homework. Not tomorrow. I'm not going to be asked tomorrow, but in the next week. You need to be come back. With the five or seven parameters. Which you can use. To differentiate different ITSM tool. Example. Service now versus remedy versus Zira versus Honeywell versus Sharewell versus survey desk versus XYZ tool. On which parameter? Let's let's say Arnab come to me. Atul, can you buy the service now from me? Why should I buy service now? You have to give me some facts and figures. You have to be give me some benefits. This is a prime exercise we do. Go and find out on the Google. You will find out, but intention is that you have to be go and read those stuff. That what parameter you you go. Simple example. Let's say Eliza is staying in a very good place. And she's paying. Very good rent as well. I am staying not a very good place, but it's a good place. And I'm paying almost only 25% of the rent which Eliza is paying. Now why she is paying more? Maybe the place she is staying is near to market, has a bank, has an ATM, has a hospitals, has a good schools, has a good locality, is a reputed or the build with the reputed builder. So these are the parameters she pick up. Right? Generally, a family man think I want to take a flat, I want to take a house near to somewhere where I can get the good schools. And in this case, the rent around that area is always high because schools are good there. People are ready to be stay. They are going to pay on that part. So now you have to be think that what are the parameters I have to find out to differentiate service now with the different tools. And I'm, I'm not saying that you have to put everything positive on the service now. Maybe you can get some negative points on the service now. So think on that part. Now let's come to the service now data centers. 
in a simple and layman language data center is a place where all the servers or the or the or the major components hardware components has been kept this called the data center service now has total 10 sorry 11 data centers major now now this has been changed actually this picture must be changed now because this set up the two data centers in india as well in one in mumbai one in bangalore and to support them they have a 10 data centers in the background means now now think to su to support their customer they have a data center and to support the data center they have a they have a backup data center as well like i i have a um, i am using desktop at my place to support the desktop i have a, C, a ups and to support the ups i have a inverter as well in the background so that in any case there is no failover there is no sudden break there is no sudden shutdown so and why this data centers why why i am discussing this point because when you go to service now when i go to service now that my customer want to purchase service now instance service now ask where they are based out i said they are based out in uh, uk then they will host my instance near to uk data center or in the uk data center so that latency should be very less they never do like my my customer is staying in canada or host with or uh, saying um, headquarter in canada and you are hosting the instance in the australia come on this is a journey time i will never host it clear put 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 your questions guys i need your questions here atul one question is it safe to assume that for one customer only one instance is configured no instance will be one but environments will be different so like yeah. we have a dev we have a test we have a uot we have a prod right right so, in so totally it is it is called as a four instances has been given to one customer or three uh, is given to one customer mm -hmm. but for the different different environments right okay okay so now this is a picture which indicate that where service now data center exist so like you can see here in this area in the uk they have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Six or seven for in the UK, Germany, Sweden, and EMEA. They have their primary centers and they have their backup centers as well. So two they have in Switzerland, two they have in Germany, one or two they have in UK, one they have EMEA, Canada, US, US Federal, Brazil, Australia. So they cover almost everywhere. And I know that I I take this picture approximately. Two years back, maybe this has been changed now, but the basics are still same. And purpose to tell you that why data centers or where the data centers because when you go to your customer as a sales, as a pre-sales, customer asks this question. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me, tell me, Mr. Adam, where is my instance will be hosted? Mm -hmm. If Adam don't know, Adam will say. it will host it in the service now side ha huh, but where i am sitting in india where you are hosting my instance so something either nearby on this location or australia or canada or us sorry sir meko to pata hi nahi i don't know about this answer and this is the first point to understand because every customer need this thing like like if i go and purchase any electronic item big electronic item from the sh uh, shopkeeper i always ask do you have the service center in in city sir service center how i know come on you are selling it you should know that where is the service center 
sir that you have to check with the company only sorry i will not purchase i need the service center either in my city or nearby my city only then you prefer to purchase clear yeah yes clear. now this thing if you want to read more about these topics in depth go to google and write this word advanced high availability architecture pdf you will get a 6 to 7 pages pdf everything which you see here all the screenshots i pick up from there only okay you can get a complete theoretical part now transfer and the failover very much important if you ask me practically i did not find or i did not see that service now has any downtime in the last 8 years in my experience not for a few seconds as well because you you can imagine they have two data centers so one is primary one is secondary so now you can imagine that how much big infra they have and this is about the failover and transfer in case in case something goes wrong in the primary data center within the less in less than 2 minutes customer will move automatically to the secondary data center ha to theek hai but what about the customer data so now you can come here for every database they have a backup database in the primary center and the primary in the primary data center they have a main database which is always getting replicated with the database in the secondary one and secondary also has a backup so now primary has a backup and primary has a backup and backups as well this is this is for one customer i'm seeing so i have a question please go ahead excuse me thank you so um for instance the applications on in the first database would it be the same on this in the second yes. database yes 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 the same application everything so if yes. one database goes same. down see 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 yeah they are doing the replication from primary they are sending the data in the secondary as well so um how so why is there now a backup backup just to be make sure see moving from one data center to other data center take time but if my primary data database is not working let's have a secondary data, sorry backup database do i need to move it from this room let's say you are staying in a 4 bhk house okay in a one room there is a no electricity will you change the complete house no you what do you say okay let me let me stay for few days in the another room yeah right so this is what they are doing but if the complete house is down and you have your uh, parents house as well then you say okay yes i can move it immediately here because everything is available in that room as well okay okay good so i have a random question i'm mm -hmm. sorry um do customers share databases like or is a database applicable to just one customer this is a structure for the one customer only okay because see this one one instance has this structure and not only this you can see every node has a primary data center nodes has a link with the secondary data uh, secondary data center nodes so replication backups are happening every every time they have a uh, what i can say um, some time limits or some some uh, timelines okay but this is what 
they are doing. So now with this, you can imagine that how big service now infrastructure is. Clear? Yes. Yes, Good. yes. Now let's go to the last one. I guess last one. Yes, last one. Backup and recovery. In WhatsApp, there's a functionality available that you can take a backup of your chats. You can fix it every night, every morning you want, the backup will be happen. The same concepts applicable here as well. What this mean? It means if I am a customer and I'm using service now, I want service now to take the backup of my data always. So that if tomorrow something goes wrong. Accidentally some other ways or I need to be check the previous data. I can get the backup from the service now. And for that service now has a policy that for every seven days there will be full backup has been done. Full backup means the day you start using service now and till today is a full backup which retained for the 28 days. Not more than that. And these things you have to be signed in the sales deal. That these are the policy you are going to be checked. Maybe some customer says maybe. No, no, I need the full backup on every three days. The nature the their, their business nature is there like that. So you have to be discussed that part, but service now do the differential backup or the or the delta backup every 24 hours. Like if today the backup will run, it will take the changes from yesterday till today only. This is what the service now has a policy on the backup and the recovery part. These things are required for the basic understanding of the tool that how the structure work in the background because if you go to the customer as a consultant, as a business process consultant, they have these questions. Everybody want to be understand that. What about my data? How you are managing my data? If I need the data for the last two days, can I get it? How are you taking the backup? We are storing the backup. It's a backup on the disk or something like that. And also service now has a process to check these backups quality on the regular basis. Let's say I know Anup is running a good company. His daily backup goes more than 1 GB. And today I just got 100 MB. How this possible? See, 90, 99 or 9990 MB is still fine. But daily it is a 1 GB. And now today I'm getting just 100 MB is, is a very big difference. So to do this part, service now has a regular checks on the backup that why there is less back less um, um, data today. If something goes wrong with their system, that backup is not done properly or something else is happening in the background. So they have an automated test run on this part. If something goes wrong, they inform to the customer as well that their backup is not done or something like that. They inform there and they put the remediation plan for the same. So Atul, one question that sure. this the first statement that you wrote in the second para that full backups are performed every sec seven days retained for 20 days. Is that a standard for all the customers or yes. even that can be customized? It is the standard, but if if you want, you can customize, but I'm not sure that do you mm -hmm. need to pay extra amount for this or some different conditions will be there. OK, OK, and one last question. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned differential backups taken every 24 hours. Are you talking about, you know, really critical data which you cannot lose? That's why you're taking it every 24 hours here. Again, again, the document which I read, they just mentioned the differential backup. Now, what is the meaning or what includes there is only critical data or every data that's they define in the sales agreements. OK, OK. My understanding says it is everything. OK, it is okay. everything. But rest need to be confirmed when you're doing the sales deal with the service now. Right, right. 
got it got it okay maybe maybe some customers say no no my data is fine you can take after 10 days as well uh, that's fine yeah but someone says no no i need every day data 24 hours data is should be done right or some might say some specific data is yes. to take to them so yes. that that should be taken yeah so so that is i'm saying that you will not find these discussion anywhere in the google because right. these yeah. are very confidential i'm we are just talking about the mbs or the gbs see the example of a bank whose daily turnover whose daily transaction is in the millions then then think how much data they are doing every day it's not in gbs it is in tbs right so they have to be defined they have to be think on that part okay clear and up yes yes clear thank you any last question is it done yes so with this we have done this three parts service now architecture introduction and service now capabilities like incident so not incident uh, this customer it and um, employee workflows we discuss in depth okay eliza arnav or sahil any last question no no for the question atul it was a very useful session today yeah really enjoyed yeah. it thank you okay thank you. okay let me stop the recording and we will take quick attendance now